where you know you're at, with the right company at the right time, when you can attract an individual like this. And that is our new uh, Senior Vice President of Product Development. Research and development. I'm going to get that right one day. I just call him the man. Help me welcome Dr. Brian Dixon. If I say the term nutrigenomics, and I said that you had to come up here and give a seminar on nutrigenomics, who would be comfortable doing that? Yeah? About three hands went up in the audience. So my goal today is to try to reset everybody and talk about nutrigenomics and get everybody thinking about what your nutrigenomics is and how it's working inside of your bodies and how these products are working. I'm going to set the stage talking about nutrigenomics and then Dr. Brett Brimhall is going to be doing breakouts and going more in depth into how these products are working on a nutrigenomic basis. Is Brett in the room? Can you step out real quick? Well, I'll bring him up at the end so you can see who he is. So if you want to learn more about the products and how all these nutrigenomic angles are working to improve your health, then please make sure you attend his, his breakout sessions. I'm going to start by asking this question. Do you need a brain to be intelligent? What do you think? Do you need a brain to be intelligent? Or is there maybe some other forms of intelligence out there? Well, let's talk about this. Here's the definition of intelligence. The ability to learn or understand things. And I think that's normally what we think of intelligence as being. Somebody who's really book smart, someone who's really good in school. But what's so interesting to me is this second part of the definition. To deal with new or difficult situations. Think about that for a second. Do you need a brain to be intelligent? I'm going to show a short video. We're going to start with single-celled organisms, and then we're going to get into insects, we'll get into other animals, and then humans. But I want you to see some intelligent behavior that's going on with these different organisms, and especially organisms that don't either have a brain or have a very primitive brain at best. So here we have these single cell organisms that are clearly moving around and interacting with their environment. Here's an immune attack on a parasite. How do those cells know to do that? Here are yeast growing and dividing. How do plants, when we put a seed in the ground, how do plants know to grow their roots down and their leaves up? Look, some plants can even respond to stimuli. So if you touch them, they kind of wilt away to try to protect themselves. How do sunflowers know to follow the sun through the day and then reset themselves so they'll capture the sun when the sun comes up the next morning? We've all seen bananas rot on our countertop. This one's really interesting because you have a lower organism, a plant, clearly without a brain, actually feeding on something that has a primitive brain. It's amazing, right? Are these plants thinking about this? How do ants know to follow this line? These ants are actually farming leaves to grow a fungus to feed the entire colony. <coughs> how do they know how to do this? A spider will spin a brand new web every single day. It's where she captures her food, stores her food, and also can give her a home. And pardon me if anyone's squeamish with spiders. How about sea stars? We think of them as just sitting on the ocean floor. But look, sped up, they're moving around and interacting with their environment. Here, an octopus can change colors. It can change shapes instantaneously. Is that octopus thinking about doing that? Pretty cool. Anyone familiar with honeybees? Honeybees have this incredibly complex behavior where one of their sisters will come back to the hive after feeding someone and communicate through this special dance where food is, what direction to fly, and then what is exactly the food source. It's an amazingly complex behavior. Are they thinking about doing this, or is intelligence residing somewhere else in their bodies? 
the chameleon thinking about changing colors or just reacting and responding to its environment? Baby dogs following her mom. How do dogs know how to fetch? Are they thinking about doing this? How about cats? Everyone thinks cats can't swim, but they're actually great swimmers. Most mammals, just within minutes, if not hours after they're born, can stand up and walk. How do they know how to do this? I'm going to show some human examples. Does that picture think about it? Or this hockey goalie? Just reacting. You cannot think fast enough. Watch this soccer goalie. If the goalie were to think about it, he would not be there in time to make that save. And then I always laugh when people tell me that they can't swim, because we're born with the ability to hold our breath and make these primitive swimming motions when we're put underwater. Right? Complex brain, but they're not thinking about it. So what's going on? Do you really need a brain to be intelligent? Or is there some intelligence that's residing somewhere else inside of us? Think about yourselves sitting here. Are you thinking about the blood going through your blood vessels? Are you thinking about the nerve impulses? Are you thinking about the breaths that you're taking? Are you thinking about digesting the food you ate this morning for breakfast? If you went for a run this morning, are you thinking about remodeling your bones or your muscles? No, it's just happening. I'm going to show you another example, and if anyone's squeamish, I apologize in advance. So I'm going to show you another little video of a woman who had cut her finger in the kitchen, and then she documented every day the healing process that was going on. So again, forgive me if you're squeamish. There's a happy ending, I promise. So look, she's starting to document the wound healing process that's going on. So when you cut your finger, are you thinking to your finger, heal, finger, heal, or is it just happening? It turns out there's a very complex immune response that's going on here to remove the damaged tissue and then also putting back new healthy cells. It's something that's happening outside of our very complex brains. And then eventually we heal up and we're back to normal again. It's amazing, right? So where is this intelligence resi residing? And what, what do we call it? Do we call it luck? Do we call it skill? Do we call it adaptation? I think that might start to be a little better word. But the word that I like to use is this one. Instinct. Right? These things are just happening. And I think we've all experienced instinct before. Think about when someone kind of sneaks up behind you and you can kind of feel that they're there. Or you can feel when somebody's looking at you. You instinctively know that somebody is there. But what is that? So if all of this is instinct that's going on, and we have this instinct inside of our bodies, where does it live? Where can we find it? How about in our DNA and genes? <laughs> this is where all of this is residing. And then just to clear up a little bit of terminology, we've all heard about DNA, I think. And DNA resides inside of the nucleus, inside of almost every single cell in our body. If I were to reach into one of those cells, get inside of your nucleus, pull out the DNA, and stretch it out here on the stage, it would be somewhere between six to nine feet long, right? Two to three meters long, wrapped up and coiled upon itself inside of every single cell. It's amazing. Our bodies organize that DNA into what we call genes. So we have somewhere between 20 to 30,000 different genes residing inside of every single nucleus in our bodies. It is amazing. Let me ask a question. Would you consider DNA to be active, 
moving around, doing stuff, or is it passive and just sitting there? How many people say active? How many people say passive? I actually say it's a passive molecule. It's really just sitting there. Okay. So here is an example that I like to use when it comes to talking about your DNA. Here's a blueprint for a house. There is a ton of information on this piece of paper. But can that blueprint build the house itself? No. That paper can't swing a hammer, right, or drive screws. It takes a very skilled individual to be able to read this blueprint, blueprint and then direct workers to ultimately build that house. Okay. This is exactly like DNA. DNA is just sitting there and is full of information the cell reads it, and then it goes off and does its work. So who are the workers in the cell? What do you guess? Proteins, exactly. Proteins, or enzymes is another way to refer to them. And they're really the little machines inside of our cells that are doing the work that our cells need. Well, if those are the workers, who's telling them what to do? What's telling them what to do? How about cell signaling? Cell signaling is the boss of the cell. It's telling everybody what to do. And I should say it's highly coordinated cellular signaling. This isn't just happening randomly. So let's talk about that for a second. It's nothing more than going from A to B, to C, to D, and then ultimately something happens. Okay. Now, I'm not going to walk through this, I promise, but this would be a chart that I would have used during my research studies to do the molecular biology. But again, it's nothing more than A, then B, then C, then D, then something happens inside of the cell. Okay. So as a molecular biologist, we want to know what's the input, what's the output, but then who, what, and where is that signal going through in terms of cell signaling? Okay. But then who is ultimately directing cell signaling? Cell signaling? What's initiating it? Where does that whole signaling process start? We're getting there close, I promise. You keep saying the environment, the environment. But you're right, coming back to that definition of intelligence, being able to adapt and respond to your uh, environment. But it's really these receptors. And these receptors are nothing more than little sensors sitting on and inside of the cell. Okay? It's nothing more than a lock and key type of model. Okay? So here's the key to my house. Okay. Will this key open the door to your house? No, right? This is exactly how receptors are working. So this is like a signaling molecule that will bind to a receptor, literally unlock and activate it, and then you start that cascade of events. Okay. The very simple way I like to think about it is like a chain of dominoes. Okay. So I've got another video here. And I want you to tell me, where's the signaling molecule? Maybe here? Where would the receptor be? Maybe here, right? Sensing the signaling molecule. And then we have the cell signaling that's going to occur. Okay? So watch, a tiny little input is going to knock over that first domino, one knocks over two. You get that whole cascade of events that happens, and then something big happens at the end. Okay? One domino with a tiny little input knocked down all of those other dominoes. This is also the power of cell signaling. 
because there can be signal amplification through the system. And I can give you two very simple analogies that you'll know well. So think of a bodybuilder. They can inject just a little bit of testosterone and put on massive amounts of muscle. They are literally remodeling their physiology. We can give women birth control pills and completely remodel their reproductive physiology. A tiny input can have a massive consequence. So let me show you another example of signal amplification. Here, there's just one domino that weighs about a gram or a fraction of an ounce that's ultimately going to knock over a domino that's about 50 kilograms or 100 pounds. Okay, so watch. This tiny little input will have a massive consequence. That's amazing. And that's the power of these cell signaling pathways. Okay, they coordinate all of that cellular function that we we're just talking about. So what's the purpose of these cell signaling pathways? To, to, to be able to adapt and same respond to the environment. That's exactly right. Okay? And that environment can be external, so what's going on around us, but then also what's going, in, going on inside of our bodies and inside of our cells. That coordinate this cellular instinct or intelligence that's residing inside of every single cell. And it can be all these different types of pathways that are going on. And I can put up example after example after example, but it's all the same thing. There's a sensor, a cascade of events that happens, cell signaling, and then a physiological response, or the things we like to talk about, the benefit that we're getting, in our case, from taking our products. For me, this is the seminal work that showed nutrition can also activate cell signaling pathways. Because what we know is that as we get older, that signal doesn't make its way through the cell as effectively as it once did. And when I say older, when would you guess that this begins? How old? 20s. 20s? 30s? You're exactly right. It's in our early 20s we can start to measure this muting of the signal going through the cell. Okay? So what we want to do is reawaken these cell signaling pathways and get them back to their full potential. Have you ever heard that chocolate is healthy for you? Yeah. It has great cardiovascular benefits. So what this research, these, this research group did was went in, they pulled out the major component of chocolate and started investigating why was chocolate healthy for us. Well, guess what they found? They found that that compound can't just make it into the cell. It has to act like what? Signal. A signaling molecule to bind to a receptor to activate what? Cellular pathways. Then they go on to do the molecular biology. They find out who the players are. And then we get that healthy cardiovascular response. Amazing. And then researchers, us at LifeVantage, have jumped all over this to look at what are the nutrients that can activate the specific cell signaling pathways that we want to affect to elicit a positive health response. So who do we talk about? Protandum NRF2 synergizer. What's the main protein that we're trying to affect? NFT. It's an open, open note test. It's NRF2, right? So what's been shown is that under oxidative stress, you will liberate NRF2 from the membrane, from another protein that it's bound to. It will go into the nucleus, turn on genes that will be made into proteins that will give us this healthy antioxidant and detoxification response. Well, what have we shown time and time again? That specific compounds, right, five botanical plant extracts, can also have that exact same effect in the absence of that stress. These nutrients liberate NRF2, it goes into the nucleus, and turns on these healthy genes. 
This is the definition of nutrigenomics. Okay? Using nutrients to affect gene expression. What about the next product? Protanum NRF1 synergizer. Again, NRF1 is just anchored out in the cell. Under the right stimulus, it goes into the nucleus and look, targets gene expression. Exact same thing. But what are we trying to affect with nutrients and other plant extracts? Mitochondrial health. And we can do this through this nutrigenomic approach. Okay? The newest product, Protanum NAD Synergizer. What's going on there? So we looked at this notion of caloric restriction. Caloric restriction has these amazing health benefits to the body. Okay? So what happens if we mimic caloric restriction through different nutrients and plant extracts? We know that we can affect a protein called sirtuins. But they require a molecule called NAD. We can affect that molecule and that sirtuin pathway through nutrients and plant extracts to elicit all of those same health benefits. So we're using nutrients to target specific genes to elicit a health response. How cool is that? So that's just really the very high level approach to what nutrigenomics is. Okay, using nutrients to activate these cell signaling pathways to ultimately elicit a beneficial response. And so we have Brett that's back standing up in the back. Do you want to come up or speak from there? He's going to go in in his breakout sessions, like I mentioned, and get way deeper into the nutrigenomic approaches of these three products and what's going on inside of our bodies. Do you have a quick hand help me? All right. How's you guys' brains after that? <laughs> right? Like, who's like, I don't understand that, but that's really cool. Okay. Uh, right, I thank you. Like, I love listening to you. Like, it's just that, that's a super complex subject. I just look at what that is. But I got thinking last night as I was going through your slides and looking at this. Like, you, you ever realize, like, how spoiled we are? Like, so if I want a protandum NRF2, all I have to do is, like, go on in my computer and I push order. And somehow it shows up at my door. Are you guys thinking about that? Like, how many steps does that have to take to get to my door? Like, it shipped from Utah, right? And somehow it makes it to Arizona, right? So somehow you activate that process, right, with this little app on our phone, right? But all of a sudden, we push this button, so we order this product, and next thing you know, it's in my, it's on my doorstep, and then I got to do one act in my body. I got to put it in there. And we don't think about that process unless we don't get our product, then what do we do? We're our product, right? So even though that system is complex, I love how simple the business is in the sense is, all I have to do is I need to know how to order a product, talk about a product, and know that corporate's taking care of the rest. Like I gotta go ahead, tell my story, listen to compliance. Like so I've learned, I love listening to everything you've ever done today. I, I love the fact is that I, got, I know that that pathway's there in my body, but I don't really understand how it all works. But I do know how to act. Okay, make right? make how cool is that? But the same thing is true in my mind in the business. We've read traditional business before. Right? Is it simple? Does it take work? Okay, so you just gotta know how to what your part, what your role, what your play is. And so um, was that Eileen up here? Like entry environment, environment, environment? Yeah, you know, I figured it was, I couldn't see who it was. Um, so guys, Eileen, um, the personal friend of mine, um, and I'm partially here because of her, right? Because of what I saw these products do in her body, right? So we have a big problem in our world. It's called super toxic world, right? And super stressed out world. We have three major problems. We have a lot of stress, we have a lot of problems. So there's three big problems I think. We have high stress, but what, are, what stresses you the most? To me, there's, there's the, the idea of health. Like the biggest concern we have is health, Finances and relationships. Like if I did boil it down, what stresses me out is 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 you know you know health in general, 
um, but I know that one pretty well. Okay, and then it's why it says taking care of my family. As a father, as a husband, one of my biggest stressors and biggest joys is being able to provide for my family. So I'm so grateful I can, but it's also probably what occupies my mind a little bit. And then thirdly is relationships. My relationships with my wife, with my kids, my community, and with, with all of you. Right? So what we have in my advantage in my mind is an opportunity to affect all three of those. Right? So my topic, why I'm here really, is to hopefully help make this science simple, where we understand how to duplicate that. Right? And we can tell those stories again and again. But what we have in my advantage, and we hear Kara speak and you heard Kim speak, right? Could you feel their passion for what this has done for them in their lives? Right? How many of you have felt that? Right? So no matter how much you know here, what takes you, moves you to action is here. Right? So no, no matter how much science you know, which is great, like if you can feel the science or if you can feel the power of what this can do in somebody else's life. And so, Kim, thank you for reminding me. It's a blessing that we get to share every single day this information. To take that into consideration, what if you didn't have this? I mean, what if you woke up thinking, what if I didn't have life energy? What if I didn't have this ability to activate my body the way I know now? Like, what if you didn't have that? Would your life look differently than it does? So are there other people that we know that haven't had the opportunity to learn that yet? Right? So our belief by the end of this weekend in what you have, not only from a product standpoint, but in a business standpoint, but in a relationship standpoint, should take you home to help you create that in your life and in your businesses. Fred, this is work. Put the microphone up. Sorry. <laughs> Am I talking too fast, too? No, you're good. All right, because sometimes I get going. Um, but what we have is a blessing. But we have to remind you of that. Um, in my mind, Life Advantage chose me at the beginning in that there was some things in my life where I saw a little boy literally, the switches turn on. Right? I watched something happen in him that I hadn't seen happen before with somebody I worked really, really hard with. So Life Advantage chose me at that moment. Right? But I have to choose every day whether or not I continue to choose Life Advantage. And that's what a lot of you guys that I've listened to and heard you talk is you've got to choose that. But every day we choose. Right? So I am grateful that I have my wife here, Holly, to support me and to see this and be part of this experience and each of you. Because what I do know is my story, I've been teaching physicians for the last 25 years, I affect so many people. But I know that every single one of you guys in this room probably know four or five my leads, or four or five of this little boy that I worked with, and a lot more. And so we can literally affect thousands and tens of thousands with literally a technology that most people have no idea even exists. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back and have to wait for my products to show up in two weeks or three weeks. I like when it comes next day. I, Amazon Prime is kind of cool. Right? But right now, the current way in which we handle health is an old model. It's an old technology. It's, it has its benefits. What we're talking about is telling a new story. And with any new technology at first, it's kind of weird. It's not really accepted. It's not well understood. But once it's fully accepted and you've been part of that story, what type of impact will you create in your world? Is it uncomfortable? Yes. Is it work? Yes. Is it worth it? You have to answer that. So I'm going to be a part of this here. Um, I'll do my best to make that science simple. But bottom line, with all the duplication stuff you see that corporate's creating for us and we're trying to create a group and a team, all we have to do is say, hey, watch this. I may not understand why it worked, but I know that domino thing is pretty cool. That makes sense, right? And so, but yeah, you had, I commend you for being here. I know it's a lot of work to be where you are. I know it's a sacrifice. Um, and I encourage you to, those of you who don't have your spouse here and your sleeping mother, because I mean, they're kind of sitting on that fence a little bit and not sure. Um, do better than I did in explaining why you want to do it and what you're doing. Right? But share those stories that you're hearing. Share what you feel. Right? Because that's going to matter. So, thank you for being here. Thank you for doing the work to be here. I look at you guys. You guys recognize that your minimum of $20,000 volume every month to this company. So, 
add that up, add up how much that is, what you guys are doing is a giant deal. The impact you're having is giant. So just be present, be here. Jot down a lot of notes, but take home specific action steps, and let's look at this thing done.